Howdy! I'm Dario the Hungry, and the new package from Songbird Productions just came in, holding Home Console Cards 38 and 39, Sunsoft Collection 2, and Pico Collection 4. Together, they hold a whopping 17 classics. Here's the back of the box, and let's look at the manuals. Now, as usual, these manuals are pretty nice. They're shiny, good pages, high quality, but they're getting a lot better. I set this in my Hungry Packages 4 video release about two weeks ago, but it's true. The improvement, especially when compared to Cart 1, is astounding. These manuals are finally providing enough information where you don't have to go digging online or looking at their original manuals. And I, for one, appreciate that. Now this is pretty cool because the Pico Collection 4 came with something extra. It's a nice, beautiful poster. It is two-sided, but on one end is Glover from the Nintendo 64 version, and on the other side, it's Risky Woods. Never heard of Risky Woods, but me and you are going to be looking at that game together. So with that said, let's pop these in and join me as we go over these games together over my mediocre gaming skills. Sunsoft Collection 2, Cart 38. We have seven games to look at, three 8-bit games, three 16-bit games, and one 32-bit game, which I'm pretty sure it's the PS1 version of that. We're going alphabetical here. Arrow the Acrobat 2. I never really played these growing up, so these are all new to me. I'm not sure how else to word this, but it feels very European to me. And that's in stark contrast to the NES Sunsoft games. I did get to try the first game on the Evercade. It was okay. I so far like the way this one controls better, but I'm gonna keep an open mind and I'm going to, you know, push through and eventually try it out. This next one is a Game Boy Color game, Blaster Master Enemy Below. Graphic style and music style of the original Blaster Master. Because it's a game worked from the ground up for the Game Boy Color, though it's still good, the music doesn't quite hit as hard as the NES original. To counter that point though, all Game Boy Color games have a certain charm to their sound, and it's all here. One thing I did notice as I explored a little bit through this first level is that I did not find a single cave to go into. I did find a door, but I didn't have the key for it. Anyone who's played this before, please leave a comment below if this is a game where you just traverse the map like this, or if there's still caves to go into. With that said, I'm still overall satisfied with what I'm seeing. Before Christmas, another, again, not sure how else to word this, another European feeling game, almost like it was made by Ocean. So it's very slippery, but you're able to shoot this magical Santa dust and jump and hide in your little Santa hat. I'm going to keep an open mind, and I will be playing through this at some point as well. When that time comes, I'll definitely share my thoughts when I complete the game. I like the Santa life counter up there. Look at that smile that he has. It's like a lifeless smile. And I will say, this is some good sounding music. Galaxy Fight Universal Warriors. This is, I believe, the PS1 version of this game. It's a Neo Geo game. Never played this before, but even though I get my butt handed to me by the CPU here because I went in blind without looking any special moves or anything up, it's pretty dang solid, and I'm going to actually look forward to playing this and getting better at it. Of course, I chose a Strider Hire You or 80s anime looking guy, but seems I chose the Ryu clone from Street Fighter. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Pre pre primitive princess. Another game I know nothing about, but you don't play as this girl, you play as some caveman looking guy, and I guess you're traveling 50 floors to go to the primitive princess? Not sure. But it's a little puzzle game that uh, you just walk around and solve things. So in this case, your main character carries around this hammer, and with this hammer, you hammer the ground and drop blocks, and then you also repair blocks. Um, with the point being to get the crystal so you can unlock the secret staircase and move on. I don't know if there's bosses. I don't know how complex this game gets, but it was pretty neat. Alright, this one's Euphoria. This one is a bit weird, and I'm all for it. I was a big Sunsoft fan growing up. I had never heard of these. I uh, never heard of Euphoria. Don't know what this character's supposed to be. Don't know what your enemies are supposed to be. But I like it. I also don't know what to do. I couldn't figure it out while I was playing through it. The cuteness, however, and the charm sold me, so this is something that I will look forward to playing. I... Don't know why he's humping the ground like that, though. Look at the little platformer here, and then you climb on this thing that comes down, and you find out that it's drool. This game is so weird, but as I've said, I'm all for it. Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel. So I feel like this is connected to Aerobat. Acrobat, Arrow the Acrobat, but it plays a lot better, and I'm actually more enthused to play through this one. I'm happy to say that it doesn't have the same slippery feel that Ocean Games have. And much like the other games on this card, I do actually look forward to playing through this and exploring the rest of the levels. For a game released on the Sega Genesis Mega Drive, the coloring is amazing. This is, however, the last game on this cart, so we're going to move on to the Pico Collection 4, Home Console 39. Alright, here's Pico Collection 4, and this one has Glover, the Nintendo 64 version, so I'm gonna play that last. But, going alphabetical, we're starting with Bad Street Brawler on this cart, and this is a game, yet again, that I've never played before, I've never even heard of it. And it's... unique, to say the least, it's a beat-em-up. Um, and... I'm not gonna deny that there's much better beat-em-ups to play. This is one that I don't see myself voluntarily playing unless it randomly falls on it. As I've made it clear before, I randomly select the consoles and games that I play through. Look at this dude's frown. He's frowning the whole time. He looks like a knockoff Duke Nukem. I do appreciate that. Also, why are there so many English Bulldogs attacking you? Mermaids of Atlantis, the riddle of the magic bubble. There's not much to say on this. It's a Tetris clone, per se, and uh, you rotate bubbles and you match the colors, which is a pain in the ass for me because I am colorblind. Red, green colorblind, to be specific. But for any puzzle people out there, it does the job. It's competent. It controls just fine. And yeah. All 
Wait, here's the one that the poster was on the opposite side of Glover. Risky Woods. And I actually kind of like it. It has, however, annoyances where you die because of unforeseen obstacles and challenges. I believe this is a Sega Genesis game as well. It definitely looks and sounds like a Sega Genesis game. Jagger, Revolt of the Westicans. I wasn't a fan of what I played here, but it won't be completely ignored. Granted, I have lots of games to play through, but if it's ever randomly selected, then yes, I will subject myself through it and then give my honest feedback on my experiences with it. All right, this one was actually pretty neat to me. Uh, Star X. It looks like a Star Fox clone. I mean, okay, it doesn't look like it. It is a Star Fox clone. I kept trying to lock on enemies like in Star Fox, but I couldn't figure it out. Not sure if I was doing something wrong. Check it out. It has barrel rolls. One thing I did notice off the bat is how twitchy it plays. If you press a direction, it will erratically move in that direction. And for any who couldn't tell by the graphics and the sound, this is absolutely a GBA game. I realize I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but this is Street Racer. Never heard of this before. But all the classic characters are here, like Frank, Hoja, Suzulu, Biff, and we also have... Raphael and also Surf Helmut and Sumo San anyway it's obviously a Mario Kart clone it plays pretty dang good though the sound the music is uh, very lackluster but the sound effects and the graphics themselves and the mode 7 all look fantastic all sound fantastic just the music didn't settle well but that's okay i'm actually looking forward to playing through this one instead of using items though you get to punch left and right so that's different i'll be checking this one out more seeing if the levels get better if they diversify at all Target Renegade. I'm actually not sure if this is a Technos game or sole property of Pico. Yes, I obviously realize I could do my own research on this, but no, I'm not going to, at least not now. But it looks like a Technos game. You know, the people who own Double Dragon, Renegade, that weird volleyball game that's actually pretty damn good. It's no Double Dragon 2. But it's really good, and I enjoyed what I've played so far, so I look forward to this one. <laughs> the Fidgets, a Game Boy game, apparently. I mean, look at it. And... It's one of those tag teaming games. Not for me, but I appreciate the variety and I'm sure that there's some sentimental value for some attached to this game and for those who like those type of puzzle games. pretty excited about this one. I mean, look at this text scroll. You know you're in for a treat. Anyways, I hadn't 
heard of Zero Tolerance Underground. Yeah, another one. But it's a first-person shooter on the Sega Genesis, and that blew my mind. That's awesome. I didn't read the book. I don't know what the objectives are. I just wandered around shooting things and punching things and checking out what the buttons do. But it played very competently, and I was pleasantly surprised. Definitely looking forward to playing through this. And finally, here's Glover. So I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to show the complete intro for Glover Evercade, Glover PS1, and then Glover N64, just for comparison reasons.
as excited as I am to play through this, there's no denying that the controls for Glover are very archaic across the PlayStation, Nintendo 64, and Evercade version. But the Evercade version has its own customizations. Like, look at the little icon there. It's the little Evercade icon and Katie, a prominent figure within Blaze. So that was pretty neat. And obviously, the graphics of the buttons were changed to match the button layout of the Evercade. The Evercade version also lets you play classic, meaning it feels like the Nintendo 64 version, and modern, which improved the controls a lot. If you compare the looks of all three games, you can tell that it's based off the N64 version. But if you look at the floor there, you can see that it has a more PS1 pixelation. Now, I know the PS1 version doesn't have that, but it, this was more common in PS1 games. It almost reminds me of Super Mario 64 for the DS. Anyone who's played Glover on the PlayStation or the 64 should know that the 64 version is the superior one, you know, even though it lacks the CGI. But what I like about the Evercade version is the clarity of the PlayStation version, but all the goodness of the 64. Anyways, I'm going to be quiet now and just let the rest play out. What are your thoughts on the games? Which ones were your favorites? Which ones looked interesting to you? And what are your thoughts on Glover? Share your thoughts in the comments below.